Hello and welcome back to Parlay. This one was written by Mr. Foot, one and only. It's about the joy, well, of fake ads. Part 1. Unyielding Rage. Recently, Mr. Foot begins, I bought a new laptop for my university work. It was from a reputable brand and it cost a lot of money. This laptop had 17 pre-installed programs slash apps that added nothing and actively worsened my experience by forcing me to uninstall them through various methods. Now, I'm an incredibly calm and peaceful person, but this incredibly disrespectful product reminded me of the one thing in this world that makes my blood boil, the one thing I despise with every fiber of my being, advertisements. I don't like it when people tell me how I'm supposed to live my life. I'm very much capable of figuring that out myself, and I am content. Sadly, contentment is the enemy of every advertisement. Ads rely on deficiencies in your life. And if they don't exist, advertisements create new deficiencies and gaslight you into believing they are real. In other words, you can rephrase every ad to say, you are living life wrong, and the only way to correct that is by buying our product slash service. If you view them through this lens, you reveal their true nature. An ad for shampoo becomes, your hair is not beautiful, and it's your fault. Buy X to fit in with the beautiful people of society. Ads for internet providers become, the internet is what connects us. If you want human connection, you will need our high-speed internet option. Ads about cars become, if you care about beauty and aesthetics, and preserving the beauty and aesthetics of nature, then you should drive our new Model X. I could go on forever, but I don't want to. These are not cherry-picked examples. These are the first three ads I, that appeared when I turned on the TV. Nowadays, it's honestly hard for me to ignore the insidious effects of ads and how they ruin our world. I realize that companies need a way to tell you about their products, but by now I'm at the point where I consciously avoid brands that advertise. Am I an angry old man shouting at the sky, or do I have a point? Uh, this is the just halfway point just to say this is delightful. I don't think you're an angry old man. I think there is a point in there, uh, though. I, yeah, I have a lot to say. Um, I think you have done a great comedy thing with this parlay where you're saying a very incisive thing in a very direct way. But also, I don't completely agree. Sure. Uh, anyway, part two contradictions. Everything I said about ads should apply to plot twist Cyberpunk 2077, which I have recently returned to after the release of the expansion. But it doesn't. I found myself transfixed at the in-game advertisement campaigns. They are mesmerizing caricatures of where our ads are headed, a world with no sense of morals or decency. Those ads are demeaning, emotionally manipulative, hypersexualized, and most importantly, ridiculously attention-grabbing. Three ads, Jinguji, More Technologies, and Cheapest Chips, are probably my favorite examples of this. They represent actual products in the game world. They're not one-off gags because there's a lot of effort in this. Some ads like the Nikola one are po po proper ad campaigns with variations on the same style. The Mr. Speed one is annoying, but it sticks around in my head, achieving its purpose. Kumquati is repulsive, but I can't look away. Why is it that I am transfixed by these fictional ads while being repulsed by the real ones? P.S. I realize that the cyberpunk ads are created by artists without the intention to get at my real-world money, but I don't think that is sufficient to explain the difference in perception. I think there is something else going on here. Well, uh, by the way, bizarre, delightful parlay topic. <laughs> uh, so I scrolled through a few of the ads. We'll look at them a little bit more closely in a few minutes, too. But basically, the premise of this parlay is the idea that advertisement is is kind of this life ruining thing, which I it's hard to disagree to some extent. But um, but of course, I will be to some extent too. And you've experienced this bizarre phenomenon where in Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, uh, you know, one of the things the game does that makes it feel really immersive is that there are many very involved fictional brands, fictional ads. Part of Cyberpunk 2077 is sort of a ultra-late capitalism, you know, excess to the point of grotesqueness and body horror. Uh, and that means you need lots of advertisements. I mean, that's very on theme. So they really went above and beyond. And there are, as you say, basically full-blown ad campaigns with multiple ads for similar products that are variations on a style, but not the same. It really feels like those brands are real. Like I And I remembered subconsciously some of the ads that you showed me as I was watching uh, through that scroll. 
So there's sort of two things that we're going to do in this parlay, but I feel like the better goal, the more satisfying conclusion, is to try to say something about Mr. Foot's kind of main thesis question. Why am I transfixed by the fictional ads while being repulsed by the real ones? And you said you think that it isn't just because they're not trying to get your money. I think it is just because of that. I think that is that. I don't think just because of that. That feels like an understatement. I think them not trying to get at your money has many complex implications, but I'm not convinced it's anything more than that, really. So let's find out. Let's take a look. I will, for a little bit, talk about just ads and respond to some of your thoughts about them because it was extremely fun to read through them, <laughs> uh, but also because I, I kind of agree and disagree, and I think it matters. It's quite relevant to this subject. Uh, I really liked that you did that as kind of a premise for part two. And then we'll talk through some of the ads more specifically and try to give you a satisfying answer. Does that sound good? Let's do this. Okay, so the main body of your complaint is this idea that ads are kind of attacking uh, you having your life put together, essentially. I totally relate to that. You know, I, I'm a person who puts quite a lot of effort into making my life better. I spend a lot of time not settling for how something is, even though maybe I it would be better off if I did, <laughs> and trying to make it, you know, just so or better or satisfying in some way. And so ads are kind of almost insulting in a way. Now, uh, this is not something that really bothers me. One of the points I'm going to get to in a few minutes is, you know, despite what I'm about to tell you, I'm kind of not enraged by ads most of the time. I sort of find them like childish and humorous somehow, like how silly that they're suggesting that this is valuable, how obviously ridiculous and blatantly unhelpful. Uh, but but why do I feel differently? I don't know. But, but anyway, I just want you to know I'm kind of extremizing my frustrations a little more than I actually am that frustrated. But I do think this all the time. And it is, <sighs> you're suggesting that this product would make my life better for a pathetically flimsy reason, very close to no reason at all. And you think you know better than me? The guy who spends my whole life dying on the hill of not settling for anything being just the way it is? In your great arrogance, you have come to approach me? Ho ho, you're approaching me? Uh, and, and it is kind of frustrating. It's almost as if when I see an ad like that, it's like the ad is kind of spitting on that effort I put into my thing in my life. I definitely don't. Um, you said, I don't like it when people tell me how I'm supposed to live my life. I'm very much capable of figuring that out myself, and I am content. And I'm definitely not content as per se. Uh, I think a, a problem with wanting to improve my life a lot is I'm categorically kind of not contentedness is just sort of not exactly a phenomenon. But I'm content with the cadence of improvements, I guess. And I certainly don't find it to be the case that most ads have anything to actually offer. <laughs> um, but I think part of it is that that's not really the premise, like because I know that the ads are not genuinely trying to help me. I know that when I think the ads are kind of spitting on my efforts, I know that they're actually not, though, because they are not genuinely trying to suggest that something would be helpful. They know the product isn't useful. Like they, the person making the ad, if you were to interrogate them and hook them up to a lie detector and that worked and you could ask them, do you actually think this will improve people's lives? They would admit that they know it won't, I, I think. And so deep down, I kind of know that the ads are not actually like insulting my intelligence or something. Um, they just, they're targeted at people that have not had the good fortune to have time to improve their life like that. And so those people really are insecure about the state of their life. The ad is targeting a real feeling like their life isn't that put together. And for most people, I mean, that's true. And it would be beneficial if they maybe took that into their own hands a little more. But the ad is sort of using that to disingenuously suggest that you can just make that go away if you spend money on our product, which like won't work, obviously. <laughs> um, they're not really acting in good faith. And so that's what's irritating is the ads are kind of co-opting the language that this would improve your life. Capitalism will improve your life, but it just won't though. You know, like if you actually think about that for a little while, you would know that, that it won't. Uh, let's actually break down a few of the examples now that you gave. And I want to talk about how I view them from my perspective, because uh, we kind of agree and disagree on some of them. And I think it's interesting exactly how with this lens, that the ad is kind of disingenuously suggesting that something would improve your life. 
but they know that it won't. Uh, they're just kind of targeting a, a something, an inadequacy, or maybe not always an inadequacy. So the premise for this part, as we go through the three examples you gave, the shampoo, the internet service, and the car example, the premise for this part is to demonstrate how, I think for some of these, there's not much of an argument against the way you presented it. The ad is trying to kind of gaslight you into thinking that this deficiency of yours, well, it is it is maybe a deficiency. You know, if you <laughs> don't take good care of your hair, like it would be good if you did that, but it's probably not your fault and buying this product will probably not make it better <laughs> unless the problem is like trivially easy to solve. Uh, and, and for some of the others, I don't think it's that. And I think that your frustration with ads has understandably kind of steered the discussion away from what the ad is actually targeting, which isn't always the person's inadequacy. I'll, you'll see what I mean pretty quickly. So for the first example, you said uh, for the shampoo ad becomes your hair is not beautiful and it's your fault. Buy X to fit in with the beauty, beautiful people of society. So yeah, I mean, it's probably not your fault. And I was making the point before that if you have something going on with your hair and you do wash your hair, <laughs> some random commercial shampoo advertised on the television is essentially non-existently likely. There's no chance that it's actually going to improve your life, right? If you've done literally anything to make your situation better, there's no chance the ad's going to help. So while it's a little unfair to say that selling someone soap can't possibly improve their life, I mean, if they own literally any soap, it's not like that. It's not like that one's going to be better, you know, <laughs> uh, in all likelihood, or it won't be specialized to your needs. So if you have a problem, some inadequacy with your hair that you care to solve, first of all, it's probably genetics, which means it's really not your fault at all. It's just random. And you probably can't solve it by buying anything other than a specialized product, which likely won't advertise because their market is too small. And all the people who have the problem will just go find that product. So this one, yeah, it's pretty hard to argue. Um, the, the thing they're suggesting is so blatantly, obviously, like philosophically invalid that you know for sure that the people who made that ad campaign know that it's not going to help the people they're selling it to and are just kind of finding a way to live with the fact that they're doing that to people. But it's 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 bad. Now, example number two, though, ads for Internet providers become the Internet is what connects us. If you want human connection, you will need our high speed Internet option. See, I really don't think that this one is evoking that at all. I think that when Internet ads are trying to target you buying a higher speed connection, they're doing something more like I think the two main things are uh, the, they're not actually trying to get you to buy anything. They just want you to commit more to their service. Like when internet providers that you already have send you a thing in the mail that lets you pay sometimes even a little bit less than you currently are for faster speed that you won't use. Therefore, it doesn't take too much on their end so that you're kind of tied to them more. You think you're getting a better deal, but you're not. Basically, nothing changes and you just kind of commit more to that provider. They're not even necessarily trying to get you to spend more money just to keep spending money with them. Or I think that they're often just evoking the idea that people like spending money, it sort of feels good to spend money. This phenomenon that the ad campaigns are often kind of gaslighting you into spending money to just make the inadequacy go away. I think the thing about that is that it also mirrors a real feeling where spending money kind of makes you feel like you change something in your life without putting any real effort into changing that thing. <laughs> and people feel that way even without ads telling them to feel that way. I mean, maybe not everybody, not all the time, not as much, but it is a phenomenon that exists prior. I don't think it's 100% fair to put that all in the ads. When internet providers are, you know, advertising, you know, more internet speed or whatever, they might sometimes evoke that, oh, look at the fun things you can do if you bought faster internet speed. All the kids can stream their video games on their game box and you can watch the, you know, Sunday game or whatever. I don't know what people do. Uh, and so, sure, maybe they're advertising for that kind of thing. But I would say that reading it as, you know, you, you're inadequately connected to people, so you need to buy faster internet. My experience has not been that they advertise it that way. If you saw an ad that was like that, it's not for me to say you didn't. I'm just saying, I think that's an example of one where, yeah, like you're not an angry old man shouting at the sky, but I also think that a lot of ads are targeting very different feelings in humans, uh, not all inadequacy or like it will improve your life. Of course, when I see these ads, I frequently react like, 
you think you know better than me what my needs as a professional working on the internet are? <laughs> yeah, right. Get out of here. Come back in 10 years. Uh, sure. I definitely have felt that way before. But uh, the ad is often not targeting it as directly. And so unlike the hair ad where I often literally laugh, like it's comical that you would suggest that your product would ever be helpful in any way. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> and in the first place, people are so bad at rhetoric in daily life. Uh, most arguments in ads are not even arguments. You know, they'll say something like the one that's stuck in my head is uh, there's this like hyper masculine soap ad in the United States that gets sent to me uh, for whatever reason a lot when I see ads, that's like, um, I don't remember the brand or whatever because I skip it every time, but I know the very first few seconds because it, that's how they stick in your head. And the ad goes, you're not a dish. And then he throws a dish at the wall or something. You're a man. Most name brand body washes you put on your skin are legally classified as detergent or something like that. And it's like that that doesn't mean anything. That, that That's a non-point. That is a non-fact. Like they they might just be categorized as detergent that isn't bad that might just be like a quirk of how they're classified or maybe it is bad but i mean you haven't demonstrated why yours is different or what is bad about them being classified as detergent you're just saying something that sounds like something i should be worried about without explaining it what really drives me the wrong way about ads like that is that they take a lot of time explaining something that isn't actually a point for why you should buy their product. They don't say something quickly to save time, make a lazy argument because they're not going to take the time to make a longer one. They take all the inefficient time, but say absolutely nothing that is of any significance about the product. And so to me, it's like, you're either incredibly stupid or there is no good reason to buy this product. Because if there was, you had the time to tell me what it was. <laughs> you just didn't do that, you know? Uh, so yes, I, I express some irritation, but even as you can see me talking about this, like I'm kind of having fun. I, I And I, we have to talk about that, but let's do the last example. Uh, this is the car one. If you care about beauty and aesthetics and preserving the beauty and aesthetics of nature, then you should drive our new model X. Yeah, I think a lot of, a lot of cars are not evoking, you know, you should be sustainable actually, and are more evoking, wouldn't it be cool to look like you're sustainable and look at how sleek and sexy ooh the car would look you will have significantly more of a uh sexual arousal if you purchase our motor vehicle like <laughs> or whatever most of them are you know what i mean so here i i sort of agree that they're doing that but i also feel like that your reading is a little bit coming from your frustration with ads which while i totally understand i think there is a subtle difference in there uh, the ad is more playing to, again, like a sort of insecurity that if you think about it for yourself, you simply won't have. It sounds like Mr. Food is, you're in that boat. And certainly I am too. You know, I my, my relationship with my own aesthetics has, let's say, gone beyond a sleek car making me feel better about myself. <laughs> uh, it, it would take a little more than that nowadays, okay? <laughs> uh, that's, that's not necessarily better. I'm just saying that's how it is for me. Um, and these ads are, of course, only going to work on people that, you know, haven't done that. <laughs> I'm not saying it's better to need more to feel better about yourself, uh, but, but you will if you spend some time thinking about how to make your life better, so go figure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I think they're, these are great examples. I just wanted to spend some time highlighting them because I, it's kind of fun, come on. <laughs> but also because uh, I think it's useful when we look at the cyberpunk ads to deconstruct you know, what's going on with these. It, the, my conclusion for this first part is that the ads are targeting, I think it's important to keep in mind, a variety of human inadequacies or desires. And the problem with them is that most of them kind of don't state any real intent. They're just kind of noise or fluff. They evoke a similar problem to the reason I don't like it when people say to like subscribe or whatever on YouTube. I try to avoid doing this in my videos, not really because I, well, I don't like saying it, but why don't I like saying it? And why don't I like having it said to me? And the biggest reason is that it, to me, it, it without a reason to subscribe, which there really aren't any, I'll get to that in a minute, you're, you're basically suggesting you, you, person listening, you don't need to be given reasons to do things. So just do this without thinking about it. 
because you don't think about doing things. So just do this robotically for me, because I just want you to. And I don't want you to do things without a reason. I wish you couldn't even physically do things without having a reason. If it were up to me, you wouldn't even be able to take actions unless you had some reason for taking them. So when I tell, don't tell people to subscribe, I mean, it's kind of weird, right? Like, if you're a person who thinks for yourself, you'll just ignore it, won't you? But the problem is, I feel like I'm suggesting that it would be good if people could do things without any good reason for doing them. But I don't think that. I would like rather die than that be true. <laughs> and so that that's a level of cognitive dissonance where I feel like a bit uncomfortable even saying <laughs> that thing, which is, you know, my therapist says, you know, something, something, something about. But uh, yeah, I, I think these are the same way. You know, the frustration is that there, there's kind of no intent behind them. They're just kind of a nothing statement. And listening to them makes me more than just annoyed that they're suggesting something would improve my life, kind of annoyed that that rhetoric would even be good enough. Like in my country that doesn't exist, of Zandernesia, if you put up an ad that said, you know, you're not a dish, you're a man, most things are a detergent, you get arrested because that is not a reason for buying something. You can come back when you have a reason for buying something. You have to say like why that matters at all, like an actual reason why that matters. You don't just magically get to assert things, <laughs> except that you do because this isn't Xandernesia. This is the internet or America or whatever. Uh, hope you're listening from somewhere other than America, folks. Uh, anyway, I think that that's important to keep in mind going into part two, because in cyberpunk land, I think a huge difference between the ads in normal, you know, not Xandernesia, real life, and cyberpunk is that the cyberpunk ads have like an actual intent behind them. The ads in real life don't have real intent. Like if you think about things at all, they just have, they're, they're like not even coherent sentences. They're just sort of like nothing that is taking up a huge amount of space, meaningless non-assertions, just kind of there. <laughs> but the cyberpunk ads, which we're going to scroll through again a little bit, are, there's a few things here. They're not trying to sell stuff to you which I said I think is all it is, the only reason you like them better. But I think that that has some really complicated implications. So the first one, as you look through them, is that, you know, they are visually very similar to ads that we have in real life in some ways. But a lot of them have details that you probably wouldn't see in real life because these are in Night City in about 50 years from our current time. And so there's things happening that just don't happen in our current life. Obviously, there's cybernetic enhancements and stuff, uh, science or drugs that might not be illegal currently or exist currently, but also violence that just isn't present in normal life. Uh, you'll notice this one, and there's another one in here too, I believe, the Delamain one, um, which show, I mean, it's violent in Night City, and so protection that wouldn't be warranted in real life, although people advertise guns, anyway, uh, is, is present in these ads. So I think that's one difference. Um, you know, I would like to say quickly that you'll notice that there are not uh, all of the ads that Mr. Fruit mentioned in this scroll. I didn't include some of them because I feel like it's kind of gambling with whether that will be a problem for this YouTube channel. So forgive me for not including, I think, the other excellent ad examples that you provided, particularly the Jinguji one I thought was a very good example, but I think is close enough to... I don't mean to seem like I'm shy about putting, I don't know, like boobs or guns on the screen of my channel. It's not a big deal. We're adults here. Uh, but I just don't want to have to worry about it for the channel's well-being. So I hope you can understand that I played it a bit overly safe. Uh, and maybe that is annoying, but I hope you can understand why I wanted to do that. Uh, these will still serve as perfectly good examples. This one, you can see a person with a sort of steel-enforced body in a car crash. She's kind of lounging on a car crash. You get the sex appeal. You get the sleek, modern piece of technology. You get the <laughs> car crash, evoking your fear of being in a car crash. Uh, if you've played Cyberpunk, you know that's a pretty valid concern. Uh, you get the idea, and, and so it's a, it's a nice piece of ad work. Sure, it's a nice piece of design. But the point, of course, is that these are not real products. They evoke reality or a future version of it or an extreme version of it and they feel like things in night city like you're not confused why there's an ad 
for how to survive a car crash in Night City. If you play the game, you'll see that and go, yeah, this is a Delamain taxi service ad, and you can see the guy just sprinting into the cab with gunfire firing past him. Uh, this literally happens while you're playing the game. Uh, and so they're, they're ads that feel more appropriate to the environment. And I do think that is a subtle difference. These ads have a, uh, like a lack of, of, like non sequitur to them or like a, a an increased amount of logic compared to real ads despite the fact that many of them are super overblown and it's sort of like why would you what even is this um the jinguji one that i didn't want to put on the screen is uh a a kind of fashion ad and the <laughs> the customer is wearing jinguji clothing presumably and is de like dead in the street and it says at least you're wearing jinguji and it's like you're you are literally dead it <laughs> does that matter <laughs> so sure it's not like all of them are are totally sensible but you can see in a lot of those examples that they they target like a thing that exists you know what i mean if you were in a shootout and there is a bulletproof taxi cab service, it like would be helpful to have a bulletproof taxi. You know what I mean? They at least like correlate with reality, sort of. Whereas ads in real life don't. They're in a fantasy land that doesn't exist. Almost all of the time, uh, ads that I can think of anyway, are literally referring to a fantasy land that isn't real. Whereas these ads at least refer to a, a real aspect of a fictional world. <laughs> um, they, they would make sense if Night City was real, which it, it, it pretty much is real life if you live in America. Anyway, um, so I think that's one difference, is that they uh, the, the intent is different. Now, I said I think that there's nothing about the ads that is more satisfying to you except that they are not trying to take their money, your money that they're not real basically but again i meant that to me have a lot of implications so we're going to explore i mean what is different about these ads and one of them is they are more logical i would argue more of them are more logical kind of a related point point number two the fact that they are a parody of capitalism <laughs> and american society is sort of like a, the reverse of what the real life ads are doing. You remember that bit I went on about about how the real life ads are almost suggesting, hey, you should just do things for no philosophically valid reason because you like you're just an idiot who hasn't thought about stuff. And you go, well, I think about my life all the time. What are you saying? Like you're spitting on my entire way of existing <laughs> and suggesting that it would be acceptable to just do things for no reason whatsoever and care about my life not at all, and that's just normal. And I hate that. That's true. People do act like that, but I, Mr. Food, Sandy Pants, hate that. I don't want that to be true. Stop suggesting that that would be a thing that would be okay. But the cyberpunk ads almost do the opposite. By being such a clear parody of the real ads, you know the artists, since they're not motivated by selling you anything, must be saying, look at how absurd this is. It's an intentional parody. And so seeing the ads is almost kind of healing in a way. Yeah, ads are stupid. See, they get it. The artists kind of get it. I think that's wonderful. A third related point is the idea that putting so much effort into these ads, let's pull up the Nicola set of ads. The Kumquati ad is just, that's somehow stuck. Kumquati is such a ridiculous, anyway, <laughs> that one is kind of stuck in my head too. But, um, but the Nicola ads that have like a little, um, they're like a little cycle of ads that have variations on a theme. Those ads create a level of world building that like they didn't have to do that. You know, there's an element of artistry in these ads uh, because it, the game is focused on being a piece of art instead of selling you stuff. There's an artistry in these ads that I think reassures you when you play anything that has kind of that type of artistry in it, that you are going to be playing an experience that is going to go to lengths beyond what is necessary to immerse you in that experience. Uh, so they're coming up, the three Nicola ads. And you'll see, like, it's, it's not particularly necessary for any set reason uh taste the love nicola and then the super stylized 
<laughs> soda babe, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm not really sure what these ads are meant to evoke. And these ones are more vague, right? These ads don't as directly evoke themes present in the game, in my opinion. They're just there because there would be a big soda brand. You know what I mean? I guess that's how I feel anyway. And like the, the kind of directionless evocation of sex appeal for a product that seems to have essentially nothing to do with sex appeal. Um, coffee ads and soda ads in real life often have like incredibly fabulous woman drinking an espresso. Like, ugh. It, the extraction is disgusting. Like, oh, delicious. Uh, my hair is so fabulous because I drank espresso, which is high in lipids. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> They're like that, though. Um, and so I kind of get that ad. It's not like it isn't a parody of real ads to some extent. But to, to me, that ad and the, the effort to have variations on that ad, I mean, you weren't playing cyberpunk to see the fantasy ads. You a little bit were, you know, to see the fantasy immersion world of Night City. There's like an entire realm of things you didn't know about there. How delightful. But you probably played Cyberpunk visually to see like the cool graphics for a graphics card that 30% of people bought specifically to play Cyberpunk 2077. Not so much to see specifically the really high effort ad campaigns they put into the game. You see what I mean? And so that level of providing excess world building detail just because like because it would be a wonderful piece of world building you wouldn't really glance twice if there weren't variations of the nicola ad but putting that extra little bit of detail in is a way for the artist to kind of give you a calling card this game is doing things that are going out of their way to be satisfying and fun to to observe and see for essentially no reason. We don't expect a material benefit from putting in this work. This just had to be made. An element of artistry, not necessarily art, but artistry in games, I think, is when the game does something that has no clear benefit. Like, there just isn't a clear f material gain. The game isn't going to make more money because there are more variations of the Nicola ad. The game isn't really better in any concrete way because there are variations of that ad. If there weren't variations of that ad, people wouldn't evaluate the game really differently than they would than they are because there are variations of the ad. And yet, they did do that thing because they've just decided that the excess is kind of worth it here. And that feeling, like things in this game world can be made for the sake of art, for no real reason, gives a sense of kind of wonderment when you observe them. I think this is the key to enjoying pretty much anything, Artie is that it needn't have an occasion. It's best if it has no occasion. The ads don't have the occasion of selling you something, and they also don't have the occasion of being art that you appreciate. They're just there, unexpected, not a piece of art framed in a museum, an obnoxious ad framed in the fantasy world. But how incredible that that exists. And that sense of, of a purposelessness in the ads, I think, creates an enjoyment of art that is somewhat unique and is really freeing and amazing beyond the subject of the, the sum of its parts. It doesn't seem like that would be that important, but I think it is. I think there's something kind of wonderful about that. And because of the nature of these things, pieces of art that are made as a parody of something that's really annoying in real life, and therefore you're not like looking forward to there being ads when you play cyberpunk, but paradoxically they're sort of an awesome aspect of the world because you aren't going to have your money taken by these products that don't exist. It's just sort of wonderful in, in exchange instead of it being kind of annoying. And I think that that switch up is what is so satisfying about them. To put it a different way, the ads not trying to take your money, I think means a lot more than it might seem like it does on the surface. I think that has a lot more impact than just they're not annoying. It's the absence of them being annoying. No, I think you gain quite a bit more than just removing that negative. Uh, so I wonder if that's compelling to you. Just a few other thoughts about these ads, since we're here, actually. Um, I want to talk about the the Mr. Speed one a little bit. Uh, the Kumquati one is sort of in this category, too. Um, I like how realistic the soda can looks. Anyway, uh, the Mr. Speed one, what you're going to see is a <laughs> smarmy-looking dude with a literally just speed. Um, and it, it, it's going to come up in a second and says 2x sweet clean speed. X2 sweet clean speed. Life is too short to be slow. Uh, and a smarmy looking dude uh, looking at like a freight train <laughs> flying into the sunset. 
uh, in, in his eyes. I made it a little too small for you to see that clearly. Um, I also like that in this screenshot, you can see we're like out in the desert a little bit, like I think near where the Aldecaldos and those quest lines take place, uh, which is really satisfying, like the idea that people are driving around here or it's drugs in a less fortunate part of town, maybe. Uh, not that really anywhere in Night City is fortunate, but <laughs> uh, I, it's just very satisfying too. Where and how the, the ads are presented is, again, a little more coherent, maybe, uh, in a way that is oddly satisfying. Every life ads are directionless to the point of it being difficult to even make them as a parody because you they there really isn't any reason that they're existing claiming those things. There's no coherent ideology that causes ads to say, you know, this shampoo will make your life better or whatever. It, that's just nonsense. And so if you're a thoughtful person, you will have difficulty presenting a parody of that because you have to kind of break your apparently much better brain that thinks about things in a logical way to produce an ad that has that asserts things so meaninglessly you know what i mean like i think that's actually legitimately hard and so these ads do have a bit more of a theme like something between them that you might have noticed is they they have a little bit of cartoonishness or almost retro flavor which i think is pretty cool cyberpunk has quite a bit of this the idea that americana has kind of regressed a little bit as well uh, or that people are in this technologically advanced society still so poor that a lot of conventions that would have kind of weeded out have sort of come back it's a very technologically advanced city and yet there are broken down dive bars and motels all over the place that look if anything older than the current day not from the future <laughs> uh, i think is a key part of the game i think it also just makes things feel more American and less globalized if things look a little older because society was maybe a little more specific to its place when we weren't such a globalized society. And so it's interesting to see how the ads of kind of the old is new again. They have a bit of a retro cartoonish flair to them, which it's predictable will come back a few times. Maybe by the time we're 2077, we'll be on that cycle. Delightful, like cool. That's just something I think is interesting. Uh, I think that a, a big thing about these ads that I did reference in a lot of my reasoning before, but we can just kind of take as a separate point here, is that they are quite artistic. Like, they they really put some, some I don't know, like, effort <laughs> into the composition and the framing of the, the ads. They look pretty in a way that real ads often don't. A whole topic, you could do a whole parlay about this, but I figured you wanted more discussion about, like, the cyberpunk ads and how they're different. But you could do a whole topic that was just how, to some extent, the reason that ads currently don't bother me that much is because current ad culture is going through this kind of apocalypse where a lot of ads are like comically low effort. Like there, there isn't a human doing the voiceover. The, the ad isn't really coherent or cuts itself off. Like YouTube ads are currently frequently so low effort as to be like comical parodies of themselves. You can't even figure out what is being advertised like it won't stick in my head because i don't know what's happening it's just incoherent um there are a lot of ads do a thing where it's like oh you're you know playing through all those games that seem fake in ads it's like yeah but i know this is an ad you can see the skip button right there i didn't like forget this is an ad what are you doing like you're trying to pretend this isn't an ad and then they just play the game as normal like they're they're so lazy so ugly so incoherent not ugly because they're stupid ugly because they're just badly made there was almost no effort put into them that they they're kind of funny in a non-threatening way they're so bad that i don't even feel pressured to buy a product because they're so ineffective as an ad i don't even know what is being sold <laughs> and so currently i think ads don't bother me that much because they're just garbage like they <laughs> they don't even function as an advertisement even for someone who would be susceptible to them and so i think another satisfying thing about the cyberpunk 2077 ads is certainly compared to this current moment they're beautiful in a way that ads no longer are some ad campaigns from the past should you be removed from the context where they could be selling you something are arguably beautiful in the same way a closing question i had that i guess you don't have an easy way to answer is do you enjoy parody or fake ads or ads that are for a product that has been phased out like do you find those ads satisfying in a similar way i think they are in many ways very similar to these ads i hope you enjoyed this take since this was such an advertising heavy parlay i hope you won't matter uh mind very much if i were to say 
Thanks very much for the parlay. If you want to get your own parlay, you can get one in the description. There's a link if you would like to buy one. And, you know, just to give capitalism another flip in the bird, uh, remember that you can watch them all for free. You don't have to pay for them. You just pay to get one made for your topic. Thanks very much for your support, Mr. Fruit. Looking forward to the next one.